Anyway, while we don't have any direct evidence or research, especially in humans, showing efficacy for osteoarthritis, what this paper does is it looks at mechanisms and then hypothesizes that this would be how it works. And I completely agree. So there is a limitation of current research, and I think that needs to be addressed because this could be a game changer. And it is yet another reason why I think the comp the big pharma companies who don't have a GLP-1 agonist in their suite of drugs is probably not very happy about this, especially if they have a drug that they're using to help with the pain, right? If they got a pain drug or an anti-inflammatory drug in their lineup, especially some of these that are not so good or so healthy for you, like the NSAIDs, then they're not going to want this getting out there. So anyway, we're looking at existing evidence and they give you a whole nice breakdown of the different drugs and the year of approval and the company that owns them and the description and the indication and the form and the half-life and the dose and regimen. And it's very, very cool. So you get some nice little graphs. Again, I will link this paper up. If you guys want to go nerd out, you can have it all in there. But I'm just trying to translate this paper into regular people words so that you can understand it. Because if you're interested in utilizing GLP-1s, I'm going to actually be doing a whole section in my upcoming program about musculoskeletal conditions and how these play a role. So some of it's being talked about here, but I'm going to talk about it from a clinical standpoint. So anyway... This is showing efficacy in the cartilage and just the way that the cartilage works, the way that the cartilage becomes inflamed, the process by which the cartilage starts to degrade, the apoptosis that occurs, which again is the cells blowing themselves up. Apoptosis is like programmed cell death. And then the senescence, which happens when cells turn into zombies. And that all happens through this pro-inflammatory NF-kappa B pathway. We've got you, you know, the metalloproteinases. It's a whole hot mess once it starts. And so Getting the cartilage to basically chill and stop being catabolic and destroying itself is no easy feat, like I said, once it starts. And GLP-1s are showing multiple mechanisms of how they can be helpful here, which I think is incredible. Also, interestingly, as a side note, there's a receptor in your L cells. Your L cells are what secrete GLP-1 in the body. And then there's also regions of the brain that secrete GLP-1. But guess what triggers the L cells to secrete GLP-1. I just learned this. Alpha linoleic acid. And so a lot of folks are telling you to stay away from the linoleic acid. So guess what signals this receptor, this GPR120 receptor that is in the L cell that signals it to make GLP-1? Alpha linolenic acid, which you're going to find in seed oils. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Stay away from the seed oils, which I am not a huge fan of taking copious amounts of omega-6s. And I'm certainly not a fan of taking, you know, industrial rancid seed oils. But if you're going to eat some walnuts, you're going to eat some pumpkin seeds, maybe you like flax seeds and you use them fresh and grind them. There's a variety of alpha linolenic sources, but the whole, I did a whole podcast that you can go back and listen to about the cell membrane and with the CEO of Body Bio, and we talked about the importance of different fatty acids. So you can go back and listen to that if you want, but I just thought that was really funny. If you're going to cut all seed oils out of your life and all nuts completely, then you know you might be missing some GLP-1. And we know that GLP-1 deficiency is real. I have a whole theory about that that I go over in this free video training that you guys can get until the 26th at midnight. Anyway, then there's the synovial tissue. So they go through and they talk about how GLP-1-based therapies may have a protective effect on the synovial tissue because what's happening there is you get macrophage infiltration into the defects of the synovium and the whole thing basically just gets pissed off. I don't know how else to explain it. Like I said, it thickens. I can feel it with my needle. I can see it on ultrasound, but I definitely can feel it with my needle. As my needle traverses a thickened synovium, it is gummy and thick and it hurts so bad as I get, I'll get within millimeters of it. I can see it on ultrasound and the patient will recoil. I can see their face. They're just like, Oh, so I actually will drop some lidocaine right there and give it a minute before I proceed because just coming up and even whispering upon that synovial membrane can be so painful for people. And often you're given a, an x-ray to assess your knee joint damage, for instance. And all that looks at is bone. It does not tell you anything about the soft tissues around the joint. And most often it's the soft tissues around the joint that are totally pissed off. And by the way, I was doing prolotherapy and 
platelet-rich plasma and stem cells. I wasn't doing cortisone injections, but you can go back and listen to my podcast on that. So it definitely impacts the immunologic infiltration that happens, the macrophage infiltration. You guys, GLP-1 sit on your macrophages. It's crazy. Plus there's this whole concept of polarization of macrophages and it's not as distinct as this, but basically there's an M1 form and an M2 form. And some say the M1 form is bad and the M2 form is better, but you need the M1 form because it's got some anti-tumor properties. But these macrophages don't polarize back and forth permanently. It's sort of a flux. And so we want that flux working, but sometimes it'll be a little one-sided when things get a little pathologic in the body. And so GLP-1s actually impact that flux and that polarization in a positive way. And I, that's very cool too. There's also fibroblast-like rheumatoid arthritis synoviocytes, and they treated them with GLP-1s and had positive impacts. So super cool. Like the potential with rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, some of these horrific inflammatory arthritis are, it's just, that's really mind blowing to me and exciting.